the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Louis Butko. Yes, it is Tie Cats Today for a Monday, August the first, twenty twenty-two, the Civic Holiday Weekend, also known as Emancipation Day, as Canadians invited to reflect, educate, and engage in the ongoing fight against anti-black racism and discrimination. Uh, hopefully you had a great weekend and uh, maybe have today off. I'll tell you, I don't have today off. The Tie Cats didn't have the day off and uh, the great staff at the uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats didn't have the day off because I am watching them right now uh, as uh, the Tie Cats host their autograph session for season seat holders. So maybe you were down here as I was recording this. So I'm going to wave to you right now and You'll be like, oh, Louie waved at me as uh, as I was there. So uh, it's a great uh, great turnout, and lots of people excited to get to meet their favorite Hamilton Tiger Cats players. Uh, speaking of the Tiger Cats, they are they were back in the wind column as we talked about on Friday's show, but they got some help from the Ottawa Red Blacks from Jalen Acklin of all people. As the Ottawa Red Blacks go into BMO Field and take down the Toronto Argonauts. So a big win and congrats to uh, Sean Burke, the GM there. Of course, a longtime Tiger Cat uh, front office staffer and uh, much more than that. But uh, congrats to Sean Burke and thanks for doing us a favor. Uh, because with that game, the Tiger Cats now just sit one and a half games back, we can call it of first place in the East Division with the Argos on tap for Saturday at BMO Field. So lots to get into during the week. Lots we will get into. Of course, we'll have Speaking with the Enemy. I'll check in with Mike Hogan, and uh, we'll check in with Luke Tasker. We'll check in with all the guys about this rivalry. And a couple of former Ticats we'll see for the very first time against their uh, former team, Ja'Garrett Davis, uh, Brandon Banks. He had a touchdown last night, too. So a big week, and uh, we got you covered right here on the Ticats Audio Network. All right, coming up on today's show, I'm going to go one-on-one with Coach Joaquin Bradley because when your secondary plays like they did on a Thursday night, uh, everybody had a knockdown. Cam Kelly with the... Game-ending interception to finish it out. Uh, we'll check in with uh, Joaquin Bradley. Of course, he's uh, first year on the job as the defensive backs coach. So let's get into with him. Uh, we'll hear from Micah Johnson as he had himself a big game, picking up his first sack as a member of the Black and Gold and getting ready to uh, experience the uh, rivalry for the very first time. Uh, so we'll check in with Micah Johnson. And as always, we'll hear from the head coach and president of football operations, Orlando Steinauer. All right, just one piece of uh, housekeeping to let you know about as the Hamilton Tiger Cats have added national linebacker Jared Beeksma. Of course, he was a, a draft pick of the Tiger Cats in 2022. He spent some time with the Rough Riders uh, after previously spending time with the Tiger Cats. He was selected in the fifth round, 46th overall. He's a Cambridge native, and uh, that's probably. Not a good sign when it comes to uh, Curtis Newton. And uh, we'll have to wait until we have the uh, the injury report from today's practice in our hand. But it uh, doesn't look promising if, if Jared Beeksma's on his way back. Of course, Newton left Thursday's game. So we'll keep our eye on that and we'll check in on the injury report on tomorrow's show. In the meantime, let's hear from the head coach. Here is Orlando Steiner. And we started our conversation talking about uh, Carol Brooks's impact in his return to the lineup. Yeah, you know... You know, Carriel, you know, he'd had some good weeks of practice. We knew he was in shape, but, you know, ultimately, when you get in the game, you got to make your plays. And, uh, you know, I think there's a couple he left out there. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, he gave us a chance to win. I thought he, he came in for his first game back and, and did a, he did quite a great job. Yeah, and I, I like the energy of our, of our football team on most days. But, you know, I think uh, everybody came out there focused, ready to work. Uh, we were... You know, on and off the field pretty quick today. Meetings were short and crisp. Cleaned up a few things still uh, from Montreal just a little bit. And other than that, uh, we're just moving forward. You know, it's an Eastern Division opponent. Of course, you know, it's Toronto. Anytime Hamilton and Toronto go, uh, get together, it's uh, there's a little bit of added stuff that goes with it. But that's kind of the fun of it. That's the sport entertainment value. And we don't run from that. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be football played. At the end of the day, you know, the talking, the predictions and all that have to stop and it comes down to playing the game. So 
uh, we'll look forward to playing the game and you know we're going to see each other uh, quite a bit uh, over the next five weeks and so yeah one game at a time yeah i'm always i'm happy for us as a team of course i'm happy for for micah i think he's he's working hard i think he's in in better shape he's getting a better understanding of you know the expectations that we're that we're setting and, and kind of the standards that the 2022 football team is establishing so you know i thought that uh you know that we were we were um we had some good pressure in the in the pocket early uh from inside and you know micah was a big part of that but i think it was a team contribution in there and it yeah it's nice to get them on the ground uh, but as you know, we, we also think being close counts also. That is the president of football operations and head coach, Orlando Steinauer, talking about a couple of things there. A little sneak peek, and I'm sure uh, what will be many questions he'll have to answer uh, when it comes to the rivalry and uh, taking on new meaning when you play them four times in five games and then don't see them the rest of the season. So uh, it's interesting for sure. And, you know, obviously the Red Blacks, like you said, doing a great a service to the Ticats, Jalen Acklin, again, big game for him. And, uh, yeah, just one game back and a huge game coming up on Saturday. Someone who's getting their first taste of the rivalry ever, which is crazy because he's been in the league forever, but all out in the West. Uh, Micah Johnson uh, will get his first taste of the Argos and Ticats rivalry, playing for the right side of it. Uh, and we had a chance to catch up with him after practice. He mentioned that. He touched on a bit more. Here's what he had to say. It's been fun, man. I think I'm fitting in pretty well. Um, it's a great locker room, a great group of guys. I knew that coming into the situation, so it's been a lot of fun. Uh, how hard working they are, man. Honestly, it's a bunch of hard working guys. One of the hardest working groups I've been been around, and um, you know, guys bring their lunch pail day in and day out. So, um, and a real supportive group too, as well. So, I think that's um, you know, the amount of support and love that we got in the room and guys show for each other. I think that's awesome. Yeah, man, it was. Um, like you said, you don't focus on it, but it's just one of those things. Um, you know, you kind of want those. I, you kind of expect, like, for the like, most casuals really don't pay attention to a lot of that's going on. So a lot of people just see a stat and understand that. So I think a lot of a lot of good work guys and players do um, get lost um, outside of the stats. So for me, it was good just to kind of see it go up there. But you know, for me, it was just chopping wood and just you know, my teammates and my coaches were being supportive, telling them I've been playing good. And they'll come, so that's kind of one of the things. Um, yeah, I think guys are kind of just gelling and things are coming together. Um, you know, we have a lot of talent on the D-line, and, um, you know, we tell everybody has pride on the D-line. So I think it'll continue to gel. It'll continue to get better. I mean, there's games that, you know, we have no sacks or one sacks. Could have easily been, you know, four or five sacks. You're just talking about milliseconds. So, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm excited to be a part of it. Uh, you know, it's a big deal. Um, it's a big deal to the players, obviously a huge deal to the fans, and we understand how big the game is and respect it. And it is just the next game, but it's, it's a big one, man. So for me, it's just uh, fun to be a part of a rivalry, be a part of something that means something to, you know, the fans in the province for sure. Um, I think so. I th and like you just said, it's a, <clears throat> how our season's kind of laid out. These Eastern games are extremely important. So, I mean, I, obviously just how they would be any year. So for us, you know, just this heightened sense of it because it's a divisional game. And then it's like you stack on who it's against. I mean, it's all energy. So, I mean, if you can't get up for a game like this, you know, sums up. That is Micah Johnson as we caught up with him after practice. Again, part of a great Ticats defensive performance. And uh, for more on that, very pleased now to be joined by the uh, secondary coach, the DB's coach. And that's Joaquin Bradley. And uh, Coach Bradley, just start with uh, how's, how's everything going for you? Oh, uh, Louie, everything going great, man. It's unblessed, Kevin. Couldn't ask for more. When you have a game like your secondary did, uh, you know, eleven knockdown. Each guy had a knockdown, an interception with Cam Kelly there. How do you how do you build off a performance like that? Uh, well, first off, you got to give uh, credit to the to the guys up front too, because coverage work with pressure and pressure work with coverage. And you know, I commend those guys. I challenge them to play with clean eyes, understanding leverage, and that's what they're doing. And it's putting them guys in position to make plays. You know, I give them all the credit. I just was talking about this with Coach uh, about having a guy like Carriel back in the lineup. Uh, you got to see him in game action for the first time. As what what did you see from him? You know what. Um, 
he I call him Smooth. That's his nickname. I mean, cause he's smooth at what he do. I mean, he he's a great player. He's a he's a uh, playmaker. You know, he got great excellent ball skills. He gonna be in position. He, he, he communicate. So it was great getting him back. You know, and 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 all the guys. You know, I mean, uh, Darby did a great job for us. Uh, and doing a great job for us. You know, uh, Siante. You can go all around the board, man. We're a tight net secondary. That's that's how we uh, pride ourselves, and we and, and we all we all work together. When you come into a group that has so much experience playing together, like you said, even Richard Leonard coming back from uh, being away for a couple of years, what challenges come with that as a coach coming into a group that already has established chemistry? Well, the thing about me, the way I coach, I coach on principle. So I don't look at things as challenges. I look at them as opportunities. And, it, and it's all about detail, right? It's find the detail to get them guys the opportunity to go make plays. You know, and that, that's how they are. After that, 12, like you said, we had 11 PBUs. But we in there the next day, they trying to figure out how can we get better, right? And to that point, Coach had said, when I brought up Carrios' performance, he said, well, there's probably a couple plays he wants back, too. And when you have a group of guys who want to get better, you know, it, is it easier to, to review those plays again and again and again as opposed to just them rolling their eyes and wanting to move on? Oh, yeah. No, it's easy because they, they want it. You know, they're, they're a very fastidious group. You know, they all about detail. And that's what made them special. So, uh, no, it's, it's, it's not tough. It's easy because they want to be great. Uh, what does Tunde give to you? back there as that safety I mean he, he we know he's a hard hitter uh, but what are some of the intangibles that that Tunde provides well if you watch him I mean he's back at command in the secondary right he getting guys lined up he's a great communicator and as you see he's a baller <laughs> right so he back it up with his play uh he's a great leader I mean the sky's the limit for Tunde where does he get that that physicalness I mean because you wouldn't know it by looking at him right but when you see him lay a guy out where does that come from it's, it's just he just got that dog in him, you know. That's that's one thing I say. Tune they got that dog in him, and when he get on the field, it come out. And, and you know that's and I love to see him play. I mean, I'm, yeah. You mentioned Alden, um, you know, a guy who's got two great cup rings, um, but it, it's what he does off the field I think which stands out to me, um, and and the way he handles himself as hey he's special teams this week and he goes out there and be the best special teams player. What have you seen from from Darby and what does he bring to this lineup? First of all, like all the other DBs, Darby, he's a, he's a great man first. You know, he's a man of principle. He stand on him. Anything we ask him to do, he'll do, as you can see. You know, he done play, he play Sam linebacker. He done play corner for us. He done play halfback, special team. We ask him, and he had to make a play. He a playmaker, you know. And, and when you look at it, at the sum of that, you get a baller. No matter what position he in, he going to ball because it's just in him. Um, you and Coach Butts, obviously Coach Butts, your assistant uh, DB coach, while he's also taking care of special teams. Uh, what's that relationship like? Oh, man, it's great. I mean, Butts, Butts a great, great coach. Uh, he played in his system. You know, he helped me out a lot, too. So uh, having Butts is, is a plus. He's a character, too, eh? <laughs> oh, man, you know, but you got to love it, you know. And Butts is who he is, and he, and he going to uh, demand excellence as well, as O, as Mark. You know, we got we got a good coaching staff, you know, we, we – Go make plays like that. It's a collective group, you know. It's just not just one guy, but it's all the work that you put in, you know, to get us to that point during the week. You mentioned O, one of the best secondary players to ever play in this league. Is there added expectations, added, not pressure is the right word, but when you have a coach like O who knows the position group so well, help you, how do you, how do you, how do you take that? Growth. Yeah. That's how I take it. I look at it as growth. I mean, when you have guys like uh, Coach O and you got guys like Bucks and Mark in that room, you only got to you only got to you only going to grow. You know, I love listening to O just talk ball. I'm learning so much from him. O so smart and the smart. I'm talking about from protections and how you you know he just it's unbelievable to hear him talk ball. What's the mentality of the secondary? Yeah, we just we got a conquering mentality. We are, we want to we always talk about you know eating the food we kill. If we don't kill the food, we don't eat. You know, so we always stay hungry. Never get complacent. You know, we always want to be better than we was the last time. So that game over with, we on to the next. Let's go figure out you know what we can do to get better. Uh, the Argos coming to town. This rivalry has always been something special. You got four of the next five against this team. What are you expecting to see from them? You know what? It's a it's a big game because it's the next game. You know, um, we going to go out there and handle our business, right? Like we don't we're not going to make it about them. We know they got a great team. You know, got some great coaches over there. Uh, we're gonna get on film and um, watch film and figure out what we can do to go out there and stop them. But you know, it's all about us. 
right? It's all about us and making sure we handle our business. My thanks to Coach Joaquin Bradley for joining me, and my thanks to you as well, because we could not do this show without you. Uh, we are back tomorrow. In the meantime, check out a brand new episode of the CFL This Week with Bubba O'Neill, now available on the Ticats Audio Network. From all of us here, I'm Louis Butko, hoping you have a great day. See you tomorrow. Tiecast today can be heard every weekday, and we would like to hear from you. Email us at gameday at tiecats.ca. Have a question or an opinion? We want to hear it. That's gameday at tiecats.ca. Subscribe to the Tiecats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.